Welcome to Speaking of Love, the podcast with your host, LaToya. This podcast was created as a platform for spreading love. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to Speaking of Love, the podcast. And my name is LaToya. It is an honor and a privilege to be here today. Speaking of Love is a podcast that I created in honor of my father. My father, Herman McAlpin Jr., was a radio TV broadcast engineer here in the city of Detroit for many years. Unfortunately, my dad committed suicide on March 2nd of this year. So I created this platform as an honor of in honor of spreading love to help people who may be struggling in life as he was. And today I have a phenomenal guest. I have Deontay Bolden here all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. He is here today to talk about love, to talk about life. He has an amazing career. He is a, a, a director. He's a published author. He has won several awards. He has done so many great things in his right. And I want to welcome him, him to Speaking of Love. Welcome, Deontay Bowden. How are you doing today? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm doing amazing. It's an honor to be here with you, LaToya. Thank you for having me on your amazing show and platform. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Now, you and I, we um, belong to a group for podcasters, and I met you through the group, and you reached out to me, and I've invited you to be here. You have so many wonderful things going in your life. So let's get right into our interview. Talk to me, Deontay, about your life. And when you were young, how did, how did you feel growing up? Did you know that you were going to be so successful? Uh, well, growing up, I always knew that I had it in me to be in the entertainment industry. Um, my mom has all the embarrassing stories, so thank God she's not sitting next to me. But, you know, <laughs> I used to always love to be in front of the camera. You know, I used to like to entertain. And I think it was my exit from, you know, and my escape from a lot of the things growing up. You know, I grew up in a single family home. My mom and dad divorced when I was four years old. And my brother, uh, my older brother, he had muscular dystrophy. Um, and it was really hard growing up because I was like the big brother to my big brother. So, you know, getting in front of the camera and, you know, doing these imaginary things and, and being creative was uh, like my outlet to be able to, you know, just be in a different world. I'm not saying that my world wasn't great, you know, because I enjoyed, you know, my mom and my brother, but it was just great to create and be in talent shows and act and have this dream lifestyle, you know, um, that I could just escape from, you know, when I really needed to. And um, growing up, I was always in talent shows. Um, I um, found my niche when I really started to be able to take drama in school because I always felt like I was lost in school. I was like, you know, there's nothing that really just fits with me. But when I got to high school and I was able to take a drama class, I felt like I fell in love, you know, with the arts and um, acting really just uh, was the acting bug for me. Um, I moved to Los Angeles in 2012 um, after high school and I decided to just, you know, pursue my career in acting. And then acting led to me being on set one day with one of my friends and he was like, you really need to start writing. He was like, you have some creative ideas. And next thing you know, I got in front of my laptop like I am now and I started writing some wow. of my And then of course that led to me, you know, writing books, you know, writing this book. And it's just been, uh, a journey and I've been enjoying every moment. Well, speaking of writing a book, Deontay, you have written a phenomenal book called Purpose Pains. Can you talk to us about this book and the significance behind the title and the inspiration behind the book? Absolutely. So I have a copy right here in case anybody wants to see it. Uh, Purpose Pains is um, basically, I call it my introspective autobiography. Um, just like I told you guys, you know, I grew up, you know, my mom and dad were divorced when I was four years old. Um, I had a brother who was had a disability um, who I took care of, and he passed in 2006. Um, you know, he was ill. He had muscular dystrophy, um, and he suffered from complications from that. Um, and uh, just after doing my production last year, um, I put on a stage, my first stage production last year called Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places. Um, hint love since we're talking about love today <laughs> and it was two sold out shows and after that um, I really just wanted to sit down and write something because you know a lot of times as men 
we don't really discuss a lot of the things, the painful experiences that we go through. We don't provide those outlets. And because of that, especially an African-American male, we use our frustration and our, and our hurt and, our, and, and, and how we feel in other ways, violence, and out here, you know, committing all these various crimes. But God was just really dealing with me to use this as a time to put it into a book because someone out there is going through the same things that you're going through with. So Purpose Pains is basically me talking about my own personal experiences and encouraging people when you go through painful experiences in your life, it's how you grow from it, how you use it that matters. God allows us to go through so many different things so we can be able to be an example, so we can be able to endure and become stronger. So in Purpose Pains, I break down what pain is, you know, preparation, P stands for preparation, A stands for adaptation, you know, learn how to adapt to the changes in your life, not become comfortable, but learn how to adapt and move forward. Eyes for illumination, you know, God shine a light on your circle and, and who you are and what needs to change in this navigation. Sometimes we think that we're so powerful that when we go through these painful experiences, it takes us off the track of where God is trying to take us. And God is like, no, you're not that powerful. This is still a part of my plan. I'm still taking you on this journey. And then supplication, learning that we need to be in constant communication with God on a regular basis because we need God more than uh, we know it. And we need God more than he needs us. So it's important for us to always make sure that we're asking God, okay, God, what do you want me to know, learn from this? This is the time for you to get closer to God. So I just break it down. So after you finish reading this book, you understand that, you know, God has a purpose for your pain. You can either wallow in your pain or you can use it to grow and, and learn from the experience. You know, I really love that title, Purpose Pain, because I think that my me creating this platform here, this podcast in honor of my father, it is a way of giving my pain a greater purpose. Sometimes we go through things in our lives and we can sit in a corner and be sad and cry and be depressed about it, or we can get up and we can do something about it. And I remember in grief therapy for my father, the grief therapist told me the best way to grieve over your dad is to do something to perp give your pain a greater purpose. So you're in pain and you're sad about it, but what did your dad enjoy? What did he like? So you can do something that he enjoyed to honor his memory so that your book, it, um, the title of your book coincides 100% with the purpose of my podcast. And I understand that you have a, a few other things that you're involved in. You're a producer, you're a director. What type of services do you provide, Deontay? Um, as a, well, there's so much stuff that is expanded from Deontay Boulder Productions, but um, I am a writer, I'm a director, um, I'm a producer. <laughs> Um, I love also being on sets by the people who help us to direct that project. I've been asked, you know, um, I've been asked to write for a couple of people as well, but I'm open to the experience. But as a writer, I'm very territorial when it comes to what God gives me. So I'm learning how to expand on that. But there's so many other different things that we're going to be doing. I'm actually uh, about to start my own award show. Um, the Golden Awards. Yeah, that's going to be an announcement. Um, every person I'm interviewing, I'm telling them the secret before it comes out. <laughs> and so. speaking of which, you've won an award too. Tell us about your award too. Yeah, so um, this year I won um, for Purpose Things. So I'll show it again to you guys. Um, yes. Yeah, I, I won the 2020 Accomplished Literary Award um, through the Peach Theater Awards from Shonda uh, Du Bois, who is in Los Angeles. She's actually from Charlotte, North Carolina, That's but she was in Los Angeles and she created it. Um, she Her award show got uh, awarded from NAACP Awards and she's just been um, watching my journey and she's just been inspired by this book and me just put it out there and everything. So I was I won that this year and I was truly honored, you know. Awards they mean a lot, you know, when you are really just following the path that God has for you because you feel like that's God acknowledging and awarding you for excellence. So I was truly honored for that. And uh, the part of the award is, you know, to award black excellence. So to be in that midst of that category with so many other people was very um humbling. So I was honored to be a part of that. Wow, that's beautiful, Deontay. I look at you and you have accomplished so much in your young life and you have awards, you have your own production company, you're an actor, a playwright, you've written a book. You are considered to be success. My question to you is how do you define success? Because success means something different to everyone. What's your definition of success? I thought success is really just 
being able, life is so short. So when people ask me that, I always say that success to me is being able to do what you need to do, what you want to do and be happy. And also part of success is giving back to those um, who are less fortunate than what you are and um, less capable of achieving some of the things that you're able to achieve, you know, um, you know, without having some type of help and giving back to those who are in need. Um, I find that, you know, being able to do what I love to do um, and to be able to live and make money doing what you love to do is part of success. And then also being able to go back and be able to reach back to others who, you know, um, were a part of the journey and maybe not have gotten far as you are and be able to grab their hand and be able to bring them along as well. I think the greatest um, success and the greatest inspiration for me is to be able to give other people opportunity. You know, um, you see so many people overlooked a lot of times and they're not able to, you know, um, get as far as you are and you're able to bring them up and say, hey, you can come along and you know, mm-hmm. give you this opportunity. So that's great. And that's a part of me creating also the Bolden Awards, which is coming because I feel like a lot of times people are overlooked, you know, and they need to be acknowledged and they need to be encouraged and say, hey, you deserve an award. You deserve to be recognized as well. So that's success to me. If I can, you know, honor and be able to help people along the way, then I feel like I've achieved something great. Wow. And you definitely have, you have definitely achieved greatness. In your profession, Deontay, what is the biggest lesson that you have learned? Uh, To, uh, oh my God, to really not depend on people to see the potential and, and the gift inside of me and to be able to create my own opportunities. Um, you know, I, I've learned, you know, when I first started out, I was waiting for people to acknowledge the gift inside of me and waiting for people to see, you know, what God has placed um, within me and my talent and my gifts and, and my capabilities. But along the way, I've learned to really just take control over my own destiny. You know, God is overall in control, but to take control, you know, a lot of times we wait for people to give us opportunities when God is saying, I'm waiting for you to create your own opportunities. And I'll see you along the way. So that's been my biggest lesson. You know, when I go back on my old Facebook memories, I was like, oh my God, if I could just tell my old self to get up and do it, <laughs> I for people to give me that opportunity. Or don't be afraid. Did you ever yeah. have fears when you were? Yes, fear has been, oh my God, I still get fearful. You know, every time I start anything, when I started Purpose Fans, when I started my production company, you know, when I, when I, when I do different things and I start the journey, I'm, I'm terrified. But I also realized that God doesn't give us the spirit of fear, but the love, peace, and the sound mind. So um, I, I learned how to just um, understand that um, every opportunity, and, and when I'm in fear, then that means that I'm doing something great. And yeah. It's going to come so out. You walk through the fear and you do it anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. Walk in fear. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. What is your personal creed in life? Do you have like a model that you live by or? Yes, and that was part of what I was just saying. Don't wait for the opportunity, create the opportunity. Yes, I um, love it. Yes, and, and the thing about it is too, um, my spiritual mother has said it all the time. Sometimes when we're waiting for certain things to happen, it's because God is waiting on us to make it happen. So a lot of times we're saying, well, why isn't this happening? Or why isn't this door opening? Or why isn't nothing like this is created? Or why is this happening? God is like sitting there, well, I'm waiting for you to create that so I can help to make it happen, you know. Um, I used to always say, well, why isn't nobody, why does it seem like, you know, um, in the Christian community, nobody's out here making moves and doing this and doing that. And God is like, because I'm waiting for you to be the person to open up those doors and do it. So don't wait for opportunities to create those opportunities. Yeah. yeah, don't wait because you're just holding yourself back. Just step out on faith mm-hmm. and do it whether you're afraid or not. Because what I know about fear and the things that I have accomplished in my life, even though I may have been afraid going into the situation, once you're in it and you're doing it, the fear is gone. Mm-hmm. The fear subsides. It kind of goes away. Yeah. And, and I noticed that when you really just step out and do it, you know, um, along the process, um, you know, the fear is what tries to hold you back and, and make you think, oh, well, you know, you're not going to be able to do this. But once you start to see yourself do it and then you get through the process, there's nothing that anybody can tell you, um, you know, in the future because you've done it and you've been through the process. Like when I first did my play, stage play last year, I was terrified. I was like, oh, my God, what if this doesn't happen? 
But now it's like I'm pumped up for the next one. I wasn't able to do it again this year due to COVID. But I'm pumped up for the next one. And there's nothing. And it's like it gives you a certain amount of faith and boost and confidence when you go and do it again. Because you're like, I've been here, I've done that, and there's nothing that nobody could tell me, and I'm unstoppable. So I just encourage you, you know, when you feel that fear, let that be your motivation and use it, you know, to be able to accomplish what it is that you're trying to do. So, Deontay, when you wake up every morning, is there something that you do to help get your day off to a good start? Yes, I actually, one, I I pray, you know, because that, that keeps my mind and keeps me sane. I also read. Um, I try to read something that's very encouraging, whether it's a, a word from the Bible or, you know, also after that, I, I read a book, you know, and um, I keep collections of books in, in my possession, you know, and um, I also make sure that I, you know, look at something very encouraging, like quotes um, to really just help to, you know, because what you put in your mind is what's going to be, you know, on your thoughts throughout the day. And I'm very, you know, uh, conscientious of what I put in my mind um, because it's very powerful. Yes. Um, and it dictates. So, yeah, I always try to, you know, get little sayings or quotes that really just can, I could think of throughout the day. And most of the time, I would say like 90 percent of the time, whatever I put in my mind that morning is what I really need to get through the day. Because I'm in the middle of the day and I'm, I'm getting discouraged and I'm like, OK, I don't know that quote I had this morning. I got to make sure that I, I, I stick with that. So yeah, that's what I do. Wow, you are amazing. I'm so proud of you. Like, I feel like I'm your big sister. Like, I, I, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, for you all are the, my big sister. <laughs> all the things you have accomplished, Deontay, you are just wonderful. And again, for the audience, we're talking here today to Deontay Bolden. He has written a wonderful book. And the, the name of his book is called Purpose Pains. Deontay, hold up the book and tell us where we can find this book. Yes. Yeah, so um, Purpose Pains, you can find on Amazon.com. Um, you just type in Purpose Pains and it'll pop up. You can also get it on my website. It's www.deontay, D-E-O-N-T-E, like on the book, Bolden, B-O-L-D-E-N, productions.com. Or you could just simply type in. I'm one of those weird people. I typed in purpose pains and my book top right up. So, yeah. yeah. If you Google it, you'll be able to do that as well. And uh, if you are on my social media link, Deontay Bolden Productions on everything, um, you could just message me and I would try to send you, I would definitely send you a signed copy. Um, and um, yeah, so that's where you can find purpose pains. Oh, that's wonderful, Deontay. So Deontay, you know, this show here, Speaking of Love, is all about love. This is a podcast platform that I I take very seriously. It's very sacred to me because it's in honor of my father. And whenever I have a guest on my show, I always ask them the million dollar question on this podcast. And that question is, how do you define love? Hmm. Wow. How do I define love? I would say I define love as um, uh, not no judgment. Um, you know, to really love someone is to not judge them. To um, I would say to love to me is also just uh, being there for people and, and, and um, you know not loving someone based on conditions. You know, and I think of unconditional love as well. Um, I feel like in this world, we, lo- we we define love as just loving someone for our need of them or, or what we expect them to be. But true love is just really loving people without any, without any um, judgment, you know, regardless of who they are or, or what their background is or what their, you know, sexuality or whatever it is. Um, it's just really, um, you don't have to expect accept the behavior of what a person does to truly love someone. Mm-hmm. I think it just comes down to really just unconditional love and, and, and um, loving people regardless of, you know, what you expect them to be, you know, and it's really kind of hard to define love because it's in so many different um, exactly. realms. Um, and that's why I enjoy interviewing people from all around the world and getting their different perspectives on love. So there's no right or wrong answer. Yes. And um, we talk about it a lot on my podcast, DNA podcast, where we just talk about, um, you know, what true love is and, uh, and how people put so many conditions on love, you know, 
Um, it's amazing how people could be two people could be in a relationship and claim that they love each other, and then when they break up, it's almost like it becomes hatred. And oh like, yeah, how can you just turn yeah. love off so so quickly. So you know, to truly love someone is to really just value them, um, mm -hmm. you know, to honor them, you know, and to really just um, you know learn how to truly love yourself first. You know, that's the most important thing. I think when you learn how to love yourself, then you can truly learn how to love someone else. Um, oh, yes, definitely, for sure. Deontay, you have achieved levels of greatness that most people only dream of. Is there someone in your life, past or present, with whom you admire and helped you get to where you are today? Yeah, I would definitely say my mom. Um, she's just been a, a courageous woman. Um, you know, I've seen my mom just always you know, in spite of what she goes through, she always knows how to hold it together and, and hold herself down and her family. Um, and she's just been a great example to me of what um, strength is um, and endurance. Um, so that's definitely one. Um, if I could say uh, who, you know, possibly who inspired me entertainment-wise, of course, it would be the phenomenal Tyler Perry. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes, I'm excited for what God is doing for him and, and you know, him building his legacy. And, you know, uh, I'm praying to God that, you know, I'm able to, you know, um, achieve that level of success and even more. You will. You will. Trust me. I, I know you will. I see it. <laughs> Speaking of which, Deontay, what's next for you? Do you have any projects or anything? Um, I know you said you were working on your awards. Um, is there anything else that you're working on in the future? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a, uh, um, my first short film coming. Um, in, we're filming in March. It's called The Skin I'm In, and it's a three-volume series. So we're filming volume one, Melanin, Melanie. And it's about a biracial woman, Melanie, who struggled with uh, her um, identity growing up, you know, being a biracial woman and um, not knowing if she's, you know, who, who to associate with, black or white. And, you know, grew up going through that racism and facing that growing up. And she is a woman now and she starts to put those ideas in her daughter's head and she realizes that at the end of the day that no matter if you're biracial or you're black, you know, you're still going to face the same racism because she sees her daughter go through what she went through with the in a different experience. And it's basically understanding that no matter, regardless of who you are, you have to learn how to embrace your own beauty within. So we're filming that in March of 2021. Um, the Bolden Awards is coming. Um, it will be in 2022, but we're going to start the process in 2021, um, finding our nominees. Um, I call them anointees. Yeah, I was going to ask you now, what's the criteria for your awards? Like, what does a person have to achieve in order to be honored? So the Bolden Awards is going to be basically our motto is when a boldness meets greatness. Um, that's our motto. So basically, I'm looking for inspirational artists. You don't have to be a Christian to be an inspirational artist. I don't want to put, you know, uh, tags on it because I feel like even if you're a Christian or not, there's some great inspirational content out there. So basically, I want to acknowledge inspirational artists from different platforms. We have so many different types of categories. We have the Prevailing Podcast Awards. We have the Manifestation Awards. Uh, we have so many different things that I, I want to acknowledge and with this award show, I want to honor people who are often seen the underdogs, but are often overlooked in the industry. You know, I know it's what a lot of these award shows is who you know, it's um, the same people getting awarded and acknowledged, but there's people out here who are really making moves and being an inspiration and, and really, um, you know, making an impact in our communities. And I think they really deserve to be acknowledged. And this is the award show where people come together and not feel a competition, but come together and encourage and inspire each other. You know, when I see my sister Latoya walk through the door, you know, I'm loving the podcast. Keep going. You know, give me a hug. You know, when Corona is over, of course, we can't hug each other now. But, you know, I just want to provide an environment where people come together and feel unified and feel unity, not division. You know, this industry can be very competitive and everybody wants to, you know, have that crowd mentality and pull each other down. But we can embrace each other because God created us all to be successful in our own way. So that's what the Bolden Awards is. So that's coming in 2022, but we're going to be starting the process in 2021, and I'll be creating a group for that. And um, I have a children's book coming up that I just finished. Um, it's called Differently Abled. Oh, tell us about it. Yeah, so Differently Abled is about um, these 
uh, for disabled children who go through life and, and go through school. Um, you know, just being teased and, and, and not uh, being accepted because of their disabilities. And they struggle with that. And uh, we're, we're close to Christmas and everybody wants toys and gifts and presents. But these children just want the gift of being normal, um, yeah. not realizing that who they are makes a difference. Um, so they go on this journey and write this letter to Santa Claus. If you could just make me normal this year, Santa, that would just be the ideal for me. So they go with their teacher on this magical journey to deliver their letter to Santa Claus. And Santa makes the go through this whole experience of seeing life as normal. And they realize that that's not the life that they really truly want. So at the end of the story, they realize that even though they're different, they make a difference by being who they are. So that's the journey of that. And I feel like so many kids are going to be inspired by that because when you're disabled, you're special. But you're not disabled. You're differently able. Wow, so I love it. Yeah. I love it. So that's coming in 2021. And just um, my stage production again, looking for love in all the wrong places. That's oh, Deontay, I would love to come out and support you and meet you. I can't wait until this coronavirus um, pandemic is op over because mm -hmm. I want to travel the world. I want to meet you and all the other great people that have blessed my platform. Yeah. And I'm just looking forward to the future and everything that it has in store for you because you are definitely on the path of greatness. You have achieved so many levels of success at such a young age and as an african-american man i just i bow to your excellence you are phenomenal and i want you to keep going in this direction keep up the good work i do have a question for you um when the pages of your life are reviewed when everything is over for deontay bowden his time on earth is complete what do you most want to be remembered for what legacy are you leaving I want to be known for just uh, loving people. Um, I think that's very important to me, um, you know, because you can be the most successful person in this world, but the one thing I don't want people to say when I'm, you know, laying in my casket, you know, when God says it's over for me, is that I was just a, a ruthless, mean type of person. But I want people to just say that he loves people. And yeah. I want people to feel like me being a part of their lives you know, made them feel loved. And, and, and if I've done that, and I feel like I've done it all, because all of this isn't worth it if it's just going to be not loving people during the process. Um, and I think that that's what's so great, great and beautiful about your show, just speaking of love, because we need more love in this world. You know, it's so much going on this year. This has been a, a, a challenging year for so many people. Yes. To just feel loved you know, um, and, and see love in a different way. And I feel like that that's just what I, I'm put on this earth to do, to love people. So. Yeah, and the one thing I know for myself, I don't want to miss the opportunity of loving anyone anymore. I want to, I want people to know I love you and I want to show them that I love them. I don't want to die with any regrets. Mm -hmm. So I love what you're doing. I love everything that you have achieved and what you have accomplished. Is you there any, you. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about with our audience before we go? No, I just want to encourage people. I know it's been a, a, a challenging year just to go for your dreams, your aspirations. Um, I actually have my podcast coming on later today where we talk about dreams and manifestations on being. Now, how do we how do we get your podcast? So basically, we have a Facebook page. We just birthed during the um, pandemic. It's the DNA po podcast show, and it's me, my girl Jazz, and beloved, and we just get on there and talk about different things, have different topics and, and discussions. And, um, okay, the DNA podcast show. I'm going to type that in the comments here. Yeah. The DNA podcast show. And there's a Facebook page for it. Yeah, and it's uh, the DNA podcast show. And um, we just talk about, you know, loving people. And, and, and today we're going to just be talking about dreams and manifestation. So I just encourage people um, to go for your dreams, your aspirations, your goals. Don't let Corona stop you. Still wear your mask and be safe. But also <laughs> understand that you can achieve anything that you want to achieve in life. You know, how you see me going for my goals and dreams, you can do the same thing. We're here to encourage one another through the process and continue to keep your head up. 
Oh, Deontay, we have a few people um, who are watching and they have written notes to us. My friend Tabitha that says that she loves your acronym. Oh, thank you. Thank and we you. have Victoria Davis. She said awesome and congratulations to you. Thank you, Victoria. Tabitha has also wrote back and said that this has been insightful and she likes when you said to create your own opportunities. Oh, thank you, Tabitha. Now we also have the hip hop deacon, Shane Respis. Shane is a poet and he is very talented and he wanted you to know, he says, I hear that D. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. It's great that people are hearing what I have to say and I hope it encouraged someone today. If I did that, then I feel like I've done my justice on speaking of love. Oh, well, thank you, Deontay. It has been a pleasure interviewing you. I appreciate you for accepting my invitation to be here. Your mission aligns with what I have created here. And I love the fact that you were here. And I would love to have you back again. And I also want to keep in touch with you. And hopefully someday soon I can come to Atlanta, Georgia yes. to support my brother. Absolutely. My brother. Yes. You, never, you never know. We got this award show coming up and I'm loving what you're doing. So you may be coming to receive an award or something. So oh my God, fun. that would really be awesome. That would yeah. be beautiful. I'll probably cry on your stage. Oh, so well, that's all right. We'll, we'll have plenty of have tissue. <laughs> yes, I was just, I was going to say, make sure you have Kleenex. Yes. It has been a pleasure, Deontay. Thank you for being here. And thank you for my listening audience for being here today on Speaking of Love, the podcast. This is my 31st episode. I cannot believe it. My 31st episode. If you have missed any portion of this podcast, you can always go back and watch it later, or you can catch it on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, any platform you choose to listen to your podcast, Speaking of Love is going to be there. So thank you all so much for being here. And I will be back next Saturday with another amazing guest on Speaking of Love, the podcast at 12 o'clock noon Eastern Standard Time next Saturday. Thank you all so much for being here.